What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how you can install the brand new GitHub Copilot CLI on Windows. Now, this is mainly designed for Linux, but in this video, I'll show you how to set it up and get it working under PowerShell so you can use the same commands as you would on other platforms. Though it is definitely going to give you much more mileage on platforms like Linux or even WSL. So anyways, let's get into it. The GitHub Copilot CLI is being released on March 21st, becoming generally available in the coming weeks. You can try the public beta. In the meantime, you can learn about how to join here. So essentially, what exactly is the GitHub Copilot CLI? Well, if we have a look at the GitHub Next page, you'll see that simply using two question marks, we can ask it about any command that we want to run on our PC, for example, listing JavaScript files, for which it gives us a command that we can run. This will make life a lot easier when you're trying to remember obscure commands that you don't completely remember. You can simply choose to run the command, revise it, or cancel it completely. This is great, especially if you're currently using ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot pilot chat or something like that in order to get help with different commands running in the CLI. We can also use it to specifically ask questions about Git, such as listing all commits, help with deleting a local branch, etc. And finally, gh commands, which is a slightly different version of Git. Now this is super powerful. And as far as I understand, there's no more waitlist anymore. It's actually a product. And all you need in order to use it is a GitHub Copilot subscription. On the using the GitHub Copilot in the CLI page, which you'll find linked down below, they say that we'll be using the gh tool in order for it to work properly. Prerequisites, we must have a GitHub Copilot subscription and we must have the GitHub CLI installed. Super simple. Okay, so let's begin. In order to use GitHub Copilot in our terminal, in this video, I'll be showing you the Windows specific installation as well as setting up aliases. If you'd like to learn how to do this on Linux, in the description down below, you'll find a guide for that, which should simplify things quite a bit. To start, we need to install GH. In the description down below, you'll find a link to the GitHub command line. Simply download this from Windows and we'll be running the file when it's done. Simply click through the installer and when it's done, you should now be able to open up a terminal or command line and run GH where you'll see a response. Cool. Now we need to sign in. So we'll run GH auth login as such. Choose github.com, HTTPS, yes. Log in with the browser and we'll hit enter to open up our browser. Otherwise, you can copy the link if you choose the other option. Simply copy and paste in this code, select it, right click to copy and paste it in. Where now we can authorize and we should have access here. Now, in order to use the GH Copilot plugin, which you'll see currently isn't installed, we need to run GH extension installed, followed by this. As such, now to install the GitHub Copilot extension, and shortly after, we'll need to upgrade or update as such. Running both of these commands, we can now use GH Copilot, and we should see a response like this. Perfect. Now, at this point, we can use GH Copilot explain, followed by a command to learn about what it does. So, GH Copilot explain, say, NVim, which it should essentially say it's NeoVim, and yeah, it's NeoVim. If we instead use GH Copilot suggest, we can say downloading google.com into an HTML file, for example. If we send this, it'll tell us what we want to do. Is it a generic shell command, GitHub command, or Git command? It's a generic shell command that I want to run, and it essentially gives us a command like curl to download this page into an HTML file. Perfect. We can choose to copy it to the clipboard, use the arrow keys to move around, explain it, revise it, rate it, and exit. If we choose to copy it by hitting enter, it copies it to the clipboard, and we can choose exit or control Control C to close. Now we can paste it in and run it. Cool. This is great. However, obviously typing in three words is a little bit of effort and you don't really want to be doing this all the time, especially since they're advertising using two question marks to give suggestions, git question mark and gh question mark. Now the official way is to install the GitHub Copilot CLI, which is an NPM package. So you'll need Node.js installed. And when we install it, we'll be able to use these three commands. We'll copy this installation command, npm i github next github copilot cli and assuming you already have node.js installed you'll be able to simply run it and just like that it'll install it if you need to install node.js you'll find a link in the description down below so you can do that now once we're done with this we can clear and use the github copilot cli command as such when we do we'll get told what we can do such as authorize what the shell git assist and gh assist first we need to run github copilot cli auth hit enter 
and it'll ask us to sign in. I'll control click to open this in a browser, copy this code, and we'll paste it in here. Once that's done, we'll need to wait a few seconds. And if you see a response like this, don't worry, as long as we have the gh command installed, we should be able to use GitHub Copilot CLI. So if we use what this shell, nvim for example, it should explain to us what nvim is, which it does here. Essentially, in the future, I assume you'll only need to install the GitHub Copilot CLI when the full version is released on March 21st. However, you can use gh in the meanwhile, and by having both of them installed, you can use the commands as per usual, even if you don't have quote unquote access, you do, it's just using a different backend. From here, we can choose to run the command, revise or cancel. Perfect. Now, of course, if you're using something like PowerShell, typing in two question marks followed by whatever you want to search doesn't do anything. This is simply because the way that you're supposed to install GitHub Copilot CLI is by adding this little bit of code as an alias to your bash RC or zish RC if you're on Linux or Mac. However, on Windows, we use command prompt and PowerShell. We don't have one of these configuration files, or do we? We won't be able to use this command exactly. However, we can set up aliases to accomplish the same thing. In order to get this functionality on Windows, we need to run new item path profile item type file force and we'll open up our configuration as such. This will open up notepad where we can run some commands. In here, simply copy and paste in this from the description down below and reopen your PowerShell terminal by opening a new session and closing the previous one. Now when we run two question marks, we should see a response. Perfect, I'll cancel and we'll use two question marks, nvim, and it should tell us what nvim is. Sweet, that's exactly what we want. We can now use the two question marks to interact with GitHub Copilot as well as git question question mark and gh question mark such as how to commit latest changes it should tell us exactly what to do perfect congratulations you've now installed github copilot cli and set it up quote unquote properly on windows i've only found instructions for how to do this on linux so hopefully these little aliases help you out and save you quite a bit of time i'm sure that when the full version releases there'll be some sort of support for windows but for now this is what we need to do here if you'd like to learn how to install this on linux check the description down below for a video on how to do that anyways hopefully you found this video useful thank you for watching my name's been troubleshoot and i'll see you all next time ciao